Welcome one, welcome all. Um, so I, I just want to talk about uh, enslaved uh, Haitians. Remember, uh, they're not slaves. They are enslaved people, right? So in 1791, uh, enslaved Haitians did the seemingly impossible. They ousted their French masters and founded a nation. So this was a story. So, so Haiti was a story of a slave rebellion that worked. I don't know if you guys know this or not. And it was led by a brother named Toussaint Overture, And he's so much of a leader and so much of a loved one that I decided to name my son after him. So my son's middle name is uh, Toussaint. But France made generations of Haitians pay for their freedom in cash. So you ever wonder why Haiti gets treated like shit? You ever wonder why Haiti is always fucking like, you know what I'm saying? Gets treated like bullshit. Why it's so poor and fucking blackballed and shit like that is because the Europeans are still mad. They're still mad at, at what our at what our brothers and sisters did down there. But France made generations of Haitians pay for their freedom in cash, nigga. How much has remained a mystery until now? The Times scored centuries of old documents to find the answers. Oh, and so, th oh, the reason, okay, so what happened was Napoleon, uh, who was a French or whatever, he, he, or uh, maybe not Napoleon, I think it was Napoleon, but who, 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 whatever, the prime minister of France or whatever, he got involved in that battle at Haiti, right? And uh, what ended up happening was Toussaint Le Overture was, was whipping, was whipping them, whipping a ass to the point where France was, they was losing the battle. And it was like, yo, 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 that shit is costing way too much money. Uh, we're losing way too many generals. They're like, yo, this shit is not good. And uh, and so it, it came a point where, where they could have surrendered. But you know what? France was like, yo, we're going to we're going to go hard. Fuck that shit. We're, we want to win Haiti. There's no way these niggas are really going to overturn us. It's not going to happen. So what so what 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 France did was sell a valuable piece of land. A valuable piece of land they sold. And that is called the Louisiana Purchase. And they sold a strip of land to uh, to get more money so they can get more guns and shit like that so they can continue the fight. Uh, the French sold the Louisiana Purchase to the United States of America. And that then became the United States of America that was France okay see look the, the Louisiana purchase the sale of Louisiana was an acquisition of the territory of Louisiana by the United States from the French in 1803 in return for 15 million dollars or approximately $18 per square mile, the United States nominally acquired a total of all of that. So look how much land they acquired, nigga, for $15 million, dog. See, this was owned by the French at one time. All of this beautiful, and think about this, in this area is Louisiana. This is, this is the plains of Kansas. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I started to stop my show a bunch of times today, beloved. I apologize. But look, look at all this beautiful, like, I don't know if you guys know or not, but Missouri, uh, uh, Arkansas, Kansas, this is great fertile land. You know what I'm saying? You can grow a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not as good as Mississippi and shit like that, but it's up and down this uh, Mississippi River. Okay? So the, the, so, so the French... Toussaint Le Overture was whipping their ass, right? And so they sold, so they sold the Louisiana Purchase to help to help pay for uh, pay for the war that they was losing, right? It says, however, the French only controlled a small fraction of this area. It was inhabited by Native Americans for the majority of the area. Uh, what the United States bought was the preemptive right to obtain Indian lands by treaty or conquest. Okay, so it was Indian lands, so-called Indian lands at the time. And, okay, the Kingdom of France had controlled Louisiana territory from 1699 until it was succeeded to Spain in 1762. Now remember, all of the territories that 
Spain basically got nine times out of ten, it was part of the Moorish Empire. So many of them, many of Spain, many of the places that Spain occupied was the Moroccan Empire at one point. Anyway, so in 1800, Napoleon, I was right, uh, regained ownership of Louisiana and reestablished the French colonial empire in North America. However, France's failure to put down a revolt in Santa Domingue, which is Haiti, coupled oh, okay, with, with the war for the United Kingdom, prompted Napoleon to consider selling Louisiana to the United States. So this is this is it. So I was right. So so they sold they sold they they, they sold a Louisiana purchase so they can continue the fight, okay? That's what happened there. As we get back to uh as we get back to uh Haiti. The root of Haiti's mysteries, reparations to enslavers. So coffee cherries uh each morning, uh, there's a pot of water. Let's get to let's get to let's get to it. Coffee has been the full fulcrum of life here. So yeah, guys, coffee is one of the main uh, 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 money makers. You know, matter of fact, coffee. You see, what they don't tell you in the, in, in, in the history books is in South America, one of the biggest things that uh, you know these these countries wanted was for coffee, dr which is a drug, nicotine, tobacco. Excuse me, uh, excuse me, coffee, which is the drug, caffeine, nic uh, uh, tobacco, which is the drug, nicotine. And the poppy fields, uh, excuse me, which is a drug, opium and, and cocaine, like that, you know what I'm saying? They, don't think that coke and all this stuff is, is new to humanity. Okay. A lot of this stuff is old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Jab. Okay. Say, isn't coffee the number one selling drug? Yes, it is. Coffee has been alive here for almost three centuries since enslaved people cut the first French coffee plantations into the mountainside. Uh, but the biggest supplier of coffee and sugar consumed in the Parisian kitchens uh, made many French families fabulously rich. All right. So this is 1791 before the Civil War broke out in America. But for generations, Haitians were forced to pay the descendants of their former slave masters, including the Empress of Brazil, the son-in-law of the Russian Empire, Germany's last imperial. Ch so we so the they made shit's addicting. It, it sure is. They made the, the, the descendants of the enslaved, the ones who want they, they made them pay reparations to the fucking slave masters. You understand what I'm saying? It was a revolt. And they said, we need our money back. But who's this? When you lose a war, nigga, you don't get your money back. Anyway, the burden continued well into the 20th century. The wealth uh, Miss President's ancestor coaxed uh, uh, from the ground brought wild profits for a French bank and helped to finance the Eiffel Tower. Damn. They controlled Haiti's treasure from Paris for decades. The bank eventually became part of Europe's largest financial conglomerates. Damn. They built the Eiffel Tower off of sl uh, slave money. Yikes. Haiti's riches lured Wall Street too, delivering big margins for the institution that ultimately became Citigroup. This is where reparations comes from, right? So, 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 so if, if you're a Haitian descent, you should be, when we draft up reparations, the actual company, the institution Citigroup should pay the Haitians who helped build this institution. It elbowed out the French and helped spur the American invasion of Haiti. One of the longest military occupations in United States history. All right. Yet most coffee farmers in Miss in Miss Presence Patch of Haiti have never had running water or septic tanks. They have crude outhouses and cook their dura aqua pa rice and beans over campfires. They deliver their coffee harvest on the backs of thin horses upon dirt roads. Many, uh, like her husband can't read they never had even sat on a school bench as the haitian creole saying goes all six of the couple's children started school but none finished uh let me see haiti where the vast majority of education is private because the country never built more than a tiny uh, public school system 
There is nothing here. Says Mitch Vell, who is losing his eyesight. Can our children have to leave the country to find jobs? He used a term you hear often in Haiti. Mizzy. More than poverty. It means misery. Look at that. Fudge, man. Sheesh. Man, Europeans, man. They, they uh, A lot of these European groups, man. They wanted Haiti to pay. For uh, because you know what they wanted to do, they wanted the the they didn't they wanted the the Moors from all over the world to not be inspired, to you know what I'm saying. So they're just like you know they, they, they you, you you get it. Violence, tragedy, hunger, underdevelopment. These key words or bywords they say have clung to Haiti for more than a century. Kidnappings, outbreak, earthquakes, presidential assassinations. However. How it is possible, many acts, that Haiti shares an island with the Dominican Republic with its underground subway system, health care coverage, public school, teeming resorts, impressive stresses of economic growth. You see, how, how can one island have public schools, right, uh, um, health care, uh, resorts, uh, economic growth, under, underground subways, but the other one have utter despair? That's because they fucking set it up that way. They, they, yo, the world purposely blackballed Haiti and forced them into squalor. Corruption is the usual explanation. Haiti's lever, uh, leaders have historically ransacked the country for their own gain, sure. Legislators have spoken on radio about accepting bribes and all that shit, paying few taxes. Yeah, 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 we get it. It's one of the most corrupt nations in the world. But another story is rarely taught or acknowledged. I want to add that comment for the record. Actually, uh, let me. Oh, uh, uh, her her stream is tweaking too. When you say tweaking, what do you mean, brother? It it is it, shaking like this. Is it shaking like that? No, but it's my software. Like, I don't know. It's my software that's acting up. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what the hell is going on. Maybe it's not my. So it is my software though. Twenty-one year after Haiti's revolutionary uh, heroes declare their country's independence, swearing to die before being put back into chains or living under French domination, a squadron of French warships equipped with a uh, five hundred cannon loomed off of Haiti's coastline. The king's envoy issued a daunting ultimatum. Hand over a staggering sum in reparations to Haiti former slave masters or face another war. So they basically, they said, they basically said, yo, my nigga, oh, my check. They basically said, like, pay us more fucking money, dog. I don't give a fuck what you talking about. Pay us more money. Or or we're going to bring, bring these cannons and start motherfucking... We're going to start fucking warfare out in this bitch. The Haitians had ample reason for alarm. Two decades earlier, Napoleon had tried to destroy them. Right? The Haitians won and declared their independence. Napoleon lost more troops than he did at Waterloo and finally withdrew. He vowed to crush them and put the Haitians back into bondage. Wow. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this all the way. Yeah, caffeine tripping, huh? But rich French colonists continued to press to reconquer the territory and found another sympathetic ear when the Bourbon monarchy returned to power. No country could be expected to come to Haiti's defense. The world powers had frozen it out to officially acknowledge its independence. American lawmakers in particular did not want to did not want enslaved people in their own country to be inspired by Haiti's self-liberation and rise up. You see? You see, the global bang, bang, bang. The global bang, European bang, bang. did did not want to um 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 positively um um uh, what's the word acknowledge Haiti because they didn't they didn't want the Moors in their country to rise up and overthrow the government and shit like that and shit like that shit right like that. Shit like that. Shit like so that. so and so. And so France, France told the world, don't do business with Haiti because think about that. Basically, uh, 
a slave rebellion is basically raging war and we won the war. When we win the war, then we take over the infrastructure and then we become a government. We become, you know what I'm saying, a nation. And then and then we declare peace and then peace and friendship and then we do business out in the world. Thank you, Jamil, for the follow. But all of the countries, all of the European uh, world powers, what did they do? They fucking blackballed Haiti. They told other nations, if you fuck with Haiti, we won't fuck with you. So, so the European in general blackballed Haiti. America said, like the American Senate and the, you know what I mean? They said they didn't want enslaved people in their own country to be inspired by Haiti's uh, uh, liberation and rise up. So they forced Haiti. To, to pay crippling wages to the point where Haiti was never able to develop a strong nation and that's why it's in squalor today so this is a depiction of Napoleon attacking Haiti in 1801 and he lost the nigga lost my nigga Toussaint lay overture whipped his ass on my mama so Haiti's president eager to trade uh, uh, eager for trade and security of international recognition bowed to France's demands. With that, Haiti set another precedent. It became the world's first and only country where the descendants of enslaved people paid reparations to their masters for generations. For gender generations. It is often called the independence debt. But that's a misnomer. It was a ransom. You see what I'm saying? See, that's that's a trick bag right there, dude. First of all, they was enslaved. You see, yo, man, yo, yo, the French, man, that nigga shifty, dog. That nigga lost the war and then said, you got to pay me. Why did, and, and they said, oh, we're going to come with 500 cannons and shit. They, I would have said, nigga, bring on the cannons, nigga. Fuck you, nigga. We're not paying you, bro. And, and look, Haiti to this day has never gotten out of that 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 crutch they was in. You, you know what I'm saying? The amount was far beyond Haiti's meager means. Even the first installment was six times the government's income that year. God damn! But that was the point. That was part of the plan. The French king had given uh, the baron a second mission to ensure the former colony took out a loan from the young French banks to make the payments. This became known as Haiti's double debt. The ransom and the loan to pay it. A stunning loan that boosted the fledgling par uh, Parisians international banking system and helped cement Haiti's path into poverty and underdevelopment. You see, niggas be like, oh, well, Haiti, it's a, it's, it's a bullshit country just because it's niggas running it. That's why. No, 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 no. That's not why. That's not why. According to the records, the bankers' commissions alone exceeded the Haitian government's total revenues that year. They, it was a trick bag, dog. And and this is what Europe this is what Europe does. Uh, yo, what up, boss man? This is what Europe does to a lot of the. Uh, of 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 the so-called third world, right? This is what they do to a lot of African nations and Caribbean nations and, and South American nations. And that was only the beginning. The double debt helped push Haiti into a cycle of debts that hobbled the country for more than 100 years, draining away much of its revenue and chopping away at its ability to build essential institutions and infrastructure of the independent nation. Generations after enslaved people rebelled and created the first free black nation in the Americas. You see, not only not only was it not only was it a uh, um, a slave rebellion that 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 won, but it was the first so-called black nation in the Americas. Their children were first to work were, were forced to work sometimes little or even no pay for the benefit of others. First the French, then the Americans, then their own dictators. Two centuries after French warships blew their terrifying cannons from Port-au-Prince Harbor to celebrate uh, the debt, the echoes from that moment still wash across the countries in, in the slums, bare hospitals, crumbling roads, empty stomachs, even in the countryside, once considered the most lucrative and productive in the world. Yo, this is how the white man underdeveloped Haiti. This is what we're reading. 
This is this is in the New York Times as well. For those that don't know, for those that just walked in here, we're talking about how Haiti won won a war. Or, you know what I'm saying? They was enslaved, right? So they won the war. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't enslaved anymore, right? And then and then and then the white man or, or France said, "All right, y'all got to pay me." And they perf and they specifically pick an amount that they could not pay. They're like, "Okay, we're looking at your record. You get paid fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay, you got to pay me seventy thousand. What? Huh? How can I do that? Wow. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Haiti was one of the most lucrative countries, you know what I'm saying, popping in the world for, for a short period of time. This was a poor country that was always impoverished after 300 years of exploitation. He manages a coffee cooperative named after a Haitian revolutionary. Okay, so here goes Haiti, man. Look, man, look at this shit. The Moors of Haiti. Not doing well at all because why? Because there were slaves who 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 fought for their freedom and won. The slaves fought for our independence to make them pay for that independence again. It was setting up for another form of slavery. Damn. Since then, double debt has largely faded into history. France has repeatedly downplayed or distorted or buried it. Only a few scholars have examined it deeply. No detailed accounting of how much the Haitians actually paid has ever been done, historians say. Even in Haiti, debates over its effect in the country's economy, development, and political destiny continue today. You see? But shout out, shout, shout out to the New York Times, man. Um, 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 there, there was a uh there was a, there was a prophet. We we, we had a, a coming out of slavery. We had a prophet named Prophet Noble Drew Ali, and he he was known for for giving oral statements. And many of the oral statements were prophecies. And one of the prophecies that the Moors have passed down, because you know he was born in the 1800s in North Carolina. One of, one of the wars was he said, "Pay attention to the newspapers." I will, he said, I, uh, he said, he said, pay attention to the newspapers. You will see that the European is going to start telling the truth. Cause remember that, you know, newspapers back in the, you know what I'm saying? In the 1900s, you know, Europeans or so-called white man was lying his ass off. But you know, recently the white man been telling the truth, man. And like, look at this. This is a New York times right here, breaking down what they call double debt. I didn't know about double debt. Like I, I knew that. You know what I'm saying? Haiti was blackballed. I knew that, you know what I'm saying? They, they was trying to do their best to make sure Haiti was underdeveloped, but I didn't know how. But here, here, the, here are the receipts right here, nigga. New York Times spent months sifting through thousands of pages, original government documents. Some of them centuries old, rarely, if ever, reviewed by historians, nigga. So this is some of the first work that has ever been done. We scored libraries and archives in Haiti, France, and the U.S. to study double debt and an effect on Haiti, financially and politically. And what historians say is a first, we tabulated how much money Haitians paid to the families of their former masters and to the French bank and investors who held the first loan of Haiti. Man, fuck them niggas, man. Straight up, fuck them, dog. Not just in official government payments on the double debt, but also in interest and late fees year after year for decades. We found that Hades paid about five hundred and sixty million in today's dollars. But that doesn't nearly capture the true loss. If that money has simply stayed in the Haitian economy and grown at the nation's actual pace over the last two centuries, rather than being uh, uh, shipped off to France without any goods or services being in return, it would have added a staggering $21 billion in Haiti over time, even accounting for its notorious corruption and waste. So there you have it. If it wasn't for that crap loan, if it wasn't for that crap double debt, you see, this is what you got to use when, when this is the shit you got to say when white supremacists talk about, man, what, what black nation is popping like European nations. All right. Well, first of all, now, now you have evidence to say you niggas has specifically, you know what I'm saying? Kept us back specifically.
I have not seen at one time in history where any black nations did that to European nations. Yo, losing $21 billion over time is crucial. Nigga, that's schools and hospitals and roads and all kind of shit. For perspective, that's much bigger than Haiti's entire economy in 2020. We shared our findings and analysis with 15 leading economists and financial historians who studied developing economies and how public debt affects their growth. All but one either agreed with our $21 billion estimate and said it was squarely within the range of possibilities or considered it conservative. A few suggested additional ways of modeling, which mostly showed far bigger and long, long term losses from Haiti. Yes, brother. Uh, he, uh, Don Juan said that makes it impossible to come back from. That was the point. That you know what I mean. That 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 was the feature. You know what I'm saying? Not the bug. The reason is simple. Had the money had not been handed over to uh to to these to these you know people, it would have been spent in the Haitian economy by the coffee farmers, the laundresses, the masons, and others who earned it. It would have gone to shops, school fees, medical bills. It would have helped businesses grow, see new ones. Some of the money would have gone to the government, possibly even to build bridges, sewers, and water pipes. That spending pays off over time, boosting the, uh, the country's economic growth. It's impossible to know uh, with any certainty how Haiti's economy would have looked like, and given the history of self-dealing by officials, some historians say the needs of poor farmers in places just like Don Don would never have been priorities anyway. Anyways, we talking about a whole lot of money. In that case, the loss to Haiti is astounding. About $115 billion over time, which is eight times the size of its economy today. Put it another way, if Haiti had not been forced to pay these damn slave masters, one team of international scholars recently estimated the country per capita income in 2018 could have been almost six times as large as the Dominican Republic is today. They called the burden imposed on Haiti perhaps the single most odious sovereign debt in history. There you have it. Unbelievable, man. Though Haiti's government made the last payment connected to uh, these slaveholders in 1888, the debt was far from settled. To finish paying it off, Haiti borrowed from other foreign lenders. God damn, dude! With a few self-serving Haitian officials indifferent. So and then and then and then what makes it worse is these goddamn leaders. The goddamn leaders in Haiti, nigga, took millions. You feel me from the people, and then leaves them even more fucked. You know what I'm saying? Depleted after decades of paying France, Haiti took out even more loans after that. Shit. Them niggas is saddled in debt. By 1911, $2.53 of every $3 Haiti took in from coffee taxes. The most important source of revenue. So yeah, they went hard. They went hard in taxes because they had to get the money back. So they tax niggas, dog. So that means nigga, you sell, you sell. They say you sell a coffee for nigga three dollars, nigga two dollars and fifty cent is taxes, nigga. God damn. God damn, dog. That left precious little to run a country, much less build one. In some years, the United States occupation would begin in 1915. More of Haiti's budget went to paying the salaries expense of American officials who controlled the finances. Goddamn brackers. Providing health care to the entire nation for a amount of 2 million people. Even after the Americans relinquished uh, fiscal control in the late 1940s, Haiti farmers were living on a diet that was often close to starvation. Golly, as few as one in six children went to school. Debt still shrouded the country. In 1940s, Haitian children lucky enough to attend school were asked to bring coins to class to finish paying the avalanche of loans that weighed on their nation since its infancy. Dude, man, yo, the white man is vicious. <laughs> the 
the white man is vicious, dog. Little of this history is recognized by France. The reparations Haitians were forced to pay to France, their former masters for generations are not covered in French schools, researchers say. And when a Haitian president began loudly raising the subject, the French government scoffed and tried to squelch it. In 03, a former priest who became the first uh, de democratically elected president after dictatorship launched a campaign demanding that France repay the money. Oh, shit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dog. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, man, I'm with that. Oh, hell yeah, nigga. You owe us money, dog. Fuck that. Fuck that. It says, hold on, let me let me see. In 03, his name is Jean Bertrand Aristide, a former priest. Nigga, a priest. Oh, I love that. A priest. Okay. Became the first democratically elected president after decades of dictatorship. Launched a campaign demanding that the France repay the money it had extracted with television ad, street banners, and a legal team putting together the elements of an international lawsuit. The French government responded by assembling a public commission to study the relations of the two countries, but quietly instructed it not to say a word in favor of restitution. Of course not. They recently told the New York Times in an interview. Wow, dude. Yeah, he said, nigga, I need, my, I, need, I need that bread back, though, beloved. Beloved, we paid you, you know what I'm saying? We paid you money just, you know what I'm saying? Basically, you, you blackballed us, you know what I'm saying? You put these guns, you, you know what I'm saying? You put these cannons, 500 cannons around us and forced us to pay. And now look at us, man. You're the reason why we like this, nigga. I need a class action lawsuit, beloved. The commission uh, dismissed Aristotle's claims as a ploy for demagoguery. Oh, whatever. The independence deed as a treaty between Haiti and France, making only a passing mention of the French warships looming off the Haitian coast. Wow. A month later, the French government helped remove Mr. Aristide from power. You see that? That nigga started talking about that money. You feel me? Their France went over there and said, nigga, we got to get this nigga out of office, beloved. You see how that worked? You see how that worked? Nigga, you, sh you, know, you tap dancing and shucking and jiving. They don't give a fuck. You could be corrupt. You could be all of that. But when you start talking about nigga, I need that bread, though. Like real shit. They be like, ah, right, we got to get you out of there. A month later, a month later, <laughs> nigga, a one month, nigga, 30 days. <laughs> a month later, the French government helped remove Mr. Aristide from power, saying it was trying to prevent Haiti, which was having um, turmoil from spinning into a civil war. But while French officials long said the restitution claim was not the reason for his ouster, they acknowledged it was probably a bit about that, too. Yeah, of course it was. It would have set a precedent for many other countries. Yo, yo, that white man is ducking these reparations, my nigga. He's ducking these reparations. Nigga, the nigga in Haiti was like, yeah, I need that. I need these reparations, my nigga. Yo, Europe owes, nigga, Europe owes the Moors reparations, dog. Straight up. Not because they enslaved us, it's because we economically, you know what I'm saying, built this shit. Like, they said Citigroup was paid for, nigga. The Eiffel Tower was paid for by Haiti's money, nigga. So, so anybody that goes to the, you know what I'm saying, the Eiffel Tower, nigga, and spends money there, we need that money. He said, what happens to Ice Cube's proposal? Good question. I'm not sure. See? You see, remember, remember in this article that said America didn't want to, you know what I'm saying, didn't want Haiti to pop because that was a slave rebellion and they didn't want the, the, the slaves in America to rebel as well and get, get inspired and be all inspired. When I come to Haiti, I will, I will, for my part, pay off the debt we have. The crowd, which included Haitians president at the time, instantly stood up in loud applause. People cried. African heads of state cried. Wow. Said uh, Michelle Jean, a Haitian-born former secretary general of the international organization who was present at the speech. It was immense. Wait, hold on. Let's get, uh, hold on, hold on. Let's get back to that. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Despite his removal, the issue has not gone away. In May 2015, Francois 
Hollande, Hollande, France's president, stunned an audience gathered for the opening of a memorial center on the slave trade in Guadalupe when he referred to Haiti's payments to its former slave masters as the ransom of independence. Wow. When I come to Haiti, I will, for my part, pay off the debt we have. Wow, the crowd stood up in loud applause. People cried. African heads of state cried. It was immense. The excitement was short-lived. A few hours later, uh, Hollande's aides clarified to news organizations that he was speaking only for the moral debt, not the, not the financial debt, the moral debt. Them niggas spinning shit like the Democrats that France owed to Haiti. What the fuck are they talking about? A moral debt. Nigga, you caught that shit? RCV, what they talking about? A moral debt? The, no, nigga, we talking about money, nigga. We, we talking about money you can spend. What you talking about? Not any financial compensation. We talking about moral debt France owed to Haiti. The French government maintains the same position today. France must face up to its history, expressing solidarity with Haiti. Even so, it has not calculated how much money France received from Haiti over generations. Because you got a lot of rich white Russian. You see, a lot of people be like, oh, well, see, the white man must be smarter because he's rich. Like, he's rich and he's powerful. So he must be like, he must be white supremacy, must be for real. Like, we're more supreme than you. And then, like, be like, wait a minute. That rich white family, they rich and shit, not from anything they did. Yep, he said he got a head start. Them niggas robbed niggas, bruh. They was running around with nigga ransom money for generations, nigga. So, so that's that bullshit. That's the job of historians, the ministry said. Haiti's payment to former colonists were supposed to go solely to individual property owners, not the French government itself. Yet the state ended up with a cut anyway. Jeez, man. The Times unearthed several documents, government documents from the early 1900s, revealing that two million francs, which is money, from the descendant of Haiti's enslaved people, or $8.5 million in today's currency, landed in French state coffers. You see? Nigga, to follow the money, nigga, the receipts, nigga. Some of the families that received payments over decades remain European royalty and French are, uh, uh Arista, aristocracy aristoc aristocrat aristocrat I can't pronounce that their descendants include Maximilian Margrave of Baden a first cousin of Prince Charles a French businessman Antoine Celaire de Le Bourdet who once ran the country's powerful association of a big business a Belgian prince whose ancestors was close to Catherine the Great. You see, all these people, nigga, dodge the hijack. All of these, they, they all hijack the money, dude. Aristocracy. Thank you. Aristocracy. That's right. Aristocracy. Thank you. The Belgian prince whose ancestors were close to Catherine the Great and built a castle known as the Belgian Versailles, where a hundred of Jewish children uh, were hidden during the Holocaust. The Times tracked down and spoke to more than 30 descendants of families that received payments under Haiti's independence debt. Most said they never heard of it. They never heard of it. This part of my family history, I never knew. Yeah, see, you think, nigga, y'all balling because y'all y'all did something spectacular. You did not. The debt was not shouldered by all Haitians equally. The country's small elite who live in a gated mansions and travel regularly to Paris and Miami remain largely untouched. It was the poor who paid, continue to pay. Many argue the country has never had enough schools, clean water, electricity, or other basics. You see, it's always the poor people that's paying for this shit. The same way Elon Musk don't pay no taxes. It's ridiculous. The same way Jeff Bezos, that nigga, they said, they said he paid taxes for a man that makes $70,000. What? So, man, I thought I'd share that with you guys, man. I thought that was fascinating. He said, we're still paying sometimes with our lives. So, man, I just want to give you guys a history of Haiti. I thought that was very, very fucking fascinating. You know what I'm saying? 
This is the root of Haiti's misery, man. Now we know why Haiti is so damn miserable. You feel me? But see, look, the most profitable colony in the world during slavery, Haiti brimmed with such wealth. You see, so Haiti, nigga, Haiti was cracking. Haiti was cracking back in the day, dude. Before it was saddled, with, riddled with debt, it was cracking. You know what I'm saying? It says, during slavery, Haiti brimmed with such wealth that its largest and most important city, Cop Francois was known as the Paris of the Antilles, bursting with bookstores, cafe, gardens, public squares, bubbling fountains. It sounded like more Spain. A committee de cap, du cap, sat uh, 1,500 people and put 200 performances a year, many direct from Paris, as well as regular dances and balls. The town's slate, slate, uh, slate roofed houses with their whitewashed walls and courtyards rented for four times the price of a ground floor apartment in central Paris. You see, Haiti was cracking. It was cracking, dog. And then it says the harbor choked with garbage today was perennially full of ocean worthy sailing ships. So yeah, this shit was cracking, dude. Many kidnapped Africans died within a few years after being pulled from the putrid, crowded bowels of slave ships. First of all, we've never seen these slave ships. We've never seen these slave ships. I just want to be very clear with you. They talk a lot about these slave ships. I ain't seen them motherfuckers. Let me know if y'all seen a slave ship. I have not seen one. I've seen mock-ups, but I've not have not seen them. So any which way, man, see, it's crazy, right? So how did how does Haiti become the most profitable colony in the world? You know what I'm saying? At one time, and then now is an uller squalor to this day. We know why now. You know what I'm saying? It's called double debt. Double debt. To Francis Shane, not a single one of the monsters he wrote singled out of planes, even the slightest punishment for his crimes. Yeah, man. Real shit. The enslaved people of St. Domingue rose up on one late August evening in 1791, starting what some historians call the largest slave uprising in history. You see, they still haven't mentioned my nigga Toussaint Lee Overture. They did it with whatever weapons they can grab or fashion. They even did it with voodoo, with fire, burning sugar cane fields, plantation buildings. The cloud of black smoke that engulfed the Camp Francois made the sky glow after sunset. Here's a here's an illustration depicting plantation burning in 1791 from the Haitian Revolution. So I'm gonna stop there, man. Wow, this is that's a dope picture right there. Wow, that's just, that's a fly-ass uh, uh, picture. Huh. That was fucking dope. Haiti knew the French will return, a premonition that still towers in the stone over the country from anyway. Anyway, that, that, was, that was it, man. I'm done reading it, man. We pretty, we know what happened. This is Charles X. They fucking robbed our, our brothers down there, man. Our brothers down there in Haiti, they robbed them brothers, man. Make these brothers pay for it, man. Man, dude, look at the Moors. The Moors, man, these these eventually people became Creoles, man. All right, guys, thank you, man. I'm gonna share that share that with you guys, man. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow or the next day. And damn, this is a long ass article. Hope you guys enjoyed that. You know what I'm saying? You guys, uh, be good, be straight. You feel me? See you guys uh, tomorrow. If I go on. No, I'm not sure if I will or not. Not sure. We'll see. It's a new month. All right, y'all, man. I'm out this bitch, man. Free Haiti. Real shit.